I had the experience which many people uh, repeated uh, and told me about. I had the experience immediately that when I first, first saw them, I was the first person to see them. It was absolutely no way anybody could have seen before. Yet, after a few days or sometimes a few hours, a few minutes, it became almost familiar. I was finding features in it which I've seen somewhere. So where have I seen them? Well, first of all, certainly, as I said, in natural phenomena, but also perhaps in art. So I wonder why is it so? Uh, we know the brain has some cells which handle its shapes, boundaries, and other sh cells which handle the colors. Does the brain have also cells which handle fractal complication? Well, we don't know. It's a purely, purely hypothetical uh, question. It's a tempting question, but we don't know anything about it. Here's another strange resonance. This series of paintings was made in 1928 by a patient of Carl Gustav Jung, the co-founder of modern psychology. Jung would have been surprised and delighted to know that the computer revolution whose beginning he just lived to see, will give new impetus to his theory of the collective unconscious. The idea that there is a well of consciousness compounded of primordial universal images that we all share, the substructure or background of awareness. The mind clearly finds resonances in the M set, but there are other wider implications too. This mathematics offers new insights into the way the universe works, how much in life is determined, and how much is due to chance. When Isaac Newton came up with laws of motion and laws of gravity, the picture that emerged was of a clockwork universe. It was of a, a machine that ticked on a predetermined course. All we needed to know was where it was now, and what it was doing now, and then you could predict the future forever. And there are two challenges to this. One is quantum mechanics, which says, in fact, there is irreducible chance built into the very fabric of the universe. And you can't actually say exactly what it's doing now. You can't say exactly what it's doing ever. But the other is things that come out of the Mandelbrot set and related parts of mathematics, which is even in a Newtonian world, in practice, you may not be able to predict the future. It can be deterministic in principle, but not in practice. This is how God created a system which gave us free will. It's the most brilliant maneuver in the universe to create something in which everything is free. How could you do that? Albert Einstein refused to accept the idea of a dice-playing deity. He, he wrote a letter to Max Born in which he said, you believe in a God who plays dice, and I in complete law and order. So he obviously felt that chance and deterministic laws were not compatible, and he preferred the deterministic laws. Now what the Mandelbrot set and chaos and related things have done for us is to show that you can have both at the same time. So it's, it's not whether God plays dice that matters, it's how God plays dice. I can tell you, Exploring this set, I certainly never had the feeling of invention. I had never the feeling that my imagination was rich enough to invent all these extraordinary things. I was discovering them. They were there, even though nobody had seen them before. It's marvelous. A very simple formula explains all these very complicated things. So the goal of science is starting with mess to explain by simple formula. This is kind of dream of science. And in this case, the dream is implemented in a fantastic fashion. Often when I'm looking at my computer screen and watching the beautiful images unfolding, I'm reminded of Keats's famous lines, charmed magic casements opening on the foam of perilous seas in fairy lands forlorn. The Mandelbrot set is indeed one of the most astonishing discoveries in the entire history of mathematics. Who could have dreamed that such an incredibly simple equation could have generated images of literally infinite complexity? We've all read stories about maps that revealed the location of some hidden treasure. Well, in this case, the map 
is a treasure.